Thanks, I'm Grumpy Rabbit for me. Call me GR, Grumpy Rabbit for me. This is the third gameplay of Skinwalker, which was developed by Snow Owl. Last time we actually reached the cabin. Uh, let's see, I dragged her to the bed and laid her down. She was gasping for air, as if something was suffocating her. Eventually, her breathing became more regular. I asked where the others were. She shrugged. The room had stopped spinning a bit, but I felt far from good. I'll go around. Wait. No. Oh, everyone knows that you stick together. No, oh, don't just go. Oh, I'm gonna be a big hero and run off. That's, that's dumb. Suddenly, a voice could be heard from the locked door. What was worse, though, was that it was the last voice. Let me in! Let me in! God, let me in there! I immediately pulled my knife and placed it at the Celeste lying in the bed. Her eyes grew wide with shock and alarm, but they could have been faked. What are you doing? No, I'm the real one. The one out there, that's the imposter. I was kind of in a trance, unsure of what to do and staring down at her. Maybe I would have stabbed her if the voice at the door hadn't changed into some low, deep, girdle voice. Then it became high-pitched, like a little girl's. I pulled my knife away. I snapped out of the trance. Now the nausea was returning. I got to the door and opened it. There was nothing there but a trail of black liquid. Uh, um, you know what? We're gonna go outside. The thing was nowhere to be seen. Just as I was turning around, I took a look at the roof. There it was. It was close to a corner, about to turn. It looked like an albino male with really long limbs. He had fingers instead of toes, and all 20 of them were elongated. He was facing away from me. Suddenly, the head scribbled at 180 degrees and stared at me. I started choking up, as if I was suffocating. It was hard to breathe. The thing opened its mouth slowly and deliberately. I thought it was going to devour me when its tongue snaked out. On the tip of the tongue was my face, like a tumor. Eyes closed, lips upturned into some psycho smile. There's a legend somewhere that when you see a doppelganger, you die. I thought of that legend. But then the creature rounded the corner. It was gone. I lost it and followed. Vision hazy. My heart beat suddenly seemed ear splint. Ear splint. You're splitting team. Talk. I was stumbling because my legs seemed unable to coordinate. Suddenly I stumbled forward and toppled over. Once I lay there, face down in the grass, my body just seemed to shut down. I couldn't move. I can't even turn my head. There was something dripping on my back. My eyelids seemed heavy and started closing at their own accord. I saw white feet with long fingers for toes step into view. When my eyes opened, Celeste was shaking me. She was on the brink of tears and her voice was cracking. Get up! Get up! That bastard was in your skin! My head hurt. I was about to ask what happened when she started pulling me backwards towards the door. Ooh. We toppled out and stumbled towards Darren's car, which was parked in a different location from what I remembered. I was glad to be alive. The mist had stopped completely. Celeste was downright crying now. She pushed me into the back seat. That's when I noticed I was wearing different clothes from when I lost consciousness. Michael was there, huddled up in the face, buried in his knees. Some clothes, stained with blood, were beside him. They were mine. Darren and Anthony stepped on the pedal, but nothing happened. He swore and did it again. I noticed that Celeste was armed with a shotgun from the cabin. <laughs> Why is it I couldn't find a shotgun? Or use it? I asked them what was going on. The thing joined us. He looked like you. We got out of the house and found the car. We were halfway down the road, but Michael started screaming. I looked at Michael. He had a glazed over look in his eyes. The thing burst out of your clothes and jumped on the, out of the car. Michael had the shotgun. He was firing out the window. Oh, well, that's probably where I can find the shotgun. We saw the thing run all the way back to the house at the freaking speed of light. It was in my skin? Yeah. I looked down at myself. I wondered if I'd been possessed or worse. The thing had cut off my skin and wore its coat. Ooh. I shuddered at the thought of something crawling around in my skin. I asked Michael if he was alright. 
don't even have to worry about things crawling in their skin. The thing talked to me. I asked about what. He didn't respond. I realized it was happening. The car jolted into motion. Gear and fist pumped as the car started accelerating. I turned back towards the cabin and saw the albino thing standing on the roof of the house, watching us. I shuddered and turned back. Celeste screamed. Oh, jeez. The thing was in front of the car on the windshield. It opened its mouth and my tongue faced the other butt. Celeste fired the shotgun. The glass shattered and it was thrown backwards. Darren shrieked and I saw blood coming from his face. Oh, something pierced my face and I realized it was glass. The car skidded to a stop. The car doors opened and got in me. Discernible reason and I fell out. The thing lay directly across from me, eyes closed as if it was sleeping. I wish I could close my eyes. It's not I know. And I saw myself again in her energy. Oh, let's oh. I couldn't move or say anything because I couldn't. My face looked at me and started to talk. I love you, I love you, I love you. I wanna be you. Repeated over and over again. It was coming close to me. I wonder if it was going to bite me to death. The thing's eyes shot open and I realized it was going to kiss me. Ooh. I managed to regain some control and instinctively twisted back from it. I guess that was what saved me. It was sound like an explosion and blood spouted from the thing. Celeste was standing over it. Her face and her body were bleeding and she was spaced out psychopathic in her eyes. She had just fired the shotgun. My face looked directly at it. I am you. It was me. I tried again and I saw my own face again running to nothing more than a nothing more than a slouch in front of me. The thing's head flow flowered open and that's the best word I can find to describe it. Oh. So I kinda of split and split again, peeling away. I saw faces, lots of them, all on the inside of its head. I think I saw Celeste and Michael's face. They were whispering something unintelligible. And so where the branch but there was a single red cat like that, that was working in its socket. Using the sound, I'm trying to keep running sound. So it's fired one last time. The thing sort of withered away, became wrinkled and small and rotten, until it just disappeared. Celeste dropped the shotgun. I started twitching and spasming as control of my body returned to me. Eventually, I stood up. We got into, into the car silently. Darren was bleeding too, but no one said anything. We drove back to the city in silence. We explained away the damaged car as being attacked by some crazy thieves. We had ourselves patched up. Michael was still in a shot-like state. I hear he was like that for a while. When I asked him what he thought of the incident, he denied it ever happened with compelling conviction. His eyes looked dead and he had lost weight. I don't know if he forced himself not to remember or if he generally knows nothing of it. I know what I saw, but I can't remember the exact place. It has been two months now. We still refrain from talking about it. If you're expecting some huge twist or something, you'd be disappointed. I still don't know what we met out there. I don't want to know, actually. I still have nightmares about my own face shouting, I am you. One thing I do know, though, I am never going camping ever again. And Okay, guys, so we got the good end uh, ending of Skinwalkers, and thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, comment. Thank you very much. Bye.